I'm going to show you how to load SQL tables with enough test data to draw out the potential problems as you develop and test your data access strategy. No third-party tools, just a handful of queries. I'm keeping it simple. So imagine you're creating a new feature and it requires a new table in your SQL database. As you develop that feature, you probably create a handful of rows to test with, which is great because you have a way to make sure your queries return the right information and the save operations actually persist the data. Now, most repositories and UI designs won't cause a problem with a couple hundred rows. It's not until the real users start to use the application and generate lots of data. The performance problems then come to light. And the solution might be as simple as adding an index or a filtering criteria. Or you may need to redesign the schema or change the amount of data that you get from the repository. The point is, find out if you have a problem early so you can minimize the amount of refactoring needed. To do this, you're going to need a reasonably large amount of data. <laughs> How much is that? Well, that depends on what you expect to see in a table a year or two down the road. If you're making a contact management tool and you expect to have 10,000 users, it's probably reasonable to expect that they would each have 100 contacts. So maybe a total of a, th of a million contacts with 2 million addresses. That's not so many, but it's enough to help you spot problems. Now, most of us are not building applications that will need to scale to millions of users, so test data shouldn't be larger than what you expect to see before you're willing to refactor the code. Let's start by talking about what I call fake data and its benefits. Fake data is nonsensical. It's the situation where you would populate a first name field with a GUID. And it would be a pain to try to test a contact management program where all the names were GUIDs, but it would be perfectly fine to warn you that an application is fetching more data than it needs to. Are there CPU intensive operations occurring in the middle of data access functions? Do queries run efficiently? What indexes are needed? Do you need a schema redesign to improve performance? All of these are very real and important questions, but you shouldn't care what the answer is because when you're developing that feature with test data, you only need to know that it works. That's what you care about. Does it work? If it's too slow, then you can investigate why. The test data serves as an alarm to tell you when it's time to invest in performance tuning. So let's take a look at generating some fake data in SQL. SQL loves set-based operations. I can insert a bunch of data into a table really fast if I have a table to select from. So to start this process, I need a table of integers from one to a really big number. So let's quickly look at how we can do this iteratively. I'm actually going to declare two variables, one that specifies how many rows to create and one to act as a counter. And I can simply create a loop and insert the value uh, of the counter to give me a table of numbers. The problem is this is really slow. If I run this, all right, finally, two minutes and 48 seconds to do those inserts, uh, which is way too slow. So now let's try a set-based solution to this problem. I'm still going to loop until I've inserted enough rows, but instead of inserting one row at a time, I'm going to select ex against the existing rows in the table and double the counter for each iteration. So I start by seeding the table with the number one, then every time I loop, I insert double the number of rows. So one, two, four, eight, 16, until I reach the finish. When I run this, it is so much faster because SQL loves set-based operations. And there we go, done in five seconds. Let's say I have a table customer that I need to populate with data so I can test my application. And this table is gonna have a customer ID that's a primary key, it's an identity, so it'll get generated on its own. And it has a first name field and a last name field. So pretty straightforward and simple. Let's say I wanna put uh, 1 million customers into that table. What I can do is I can go ahead and call, create a select statement where I select all of the rows in my numbers table from one to 1 million. And in the first name field, I can convert that number uh, for the first row would be one into a varchar so that it can fit into a first name field. And so it'll just be one underscore first name. If I run this, and you can see that it has to create the numbers table in this case, because I'm using table variables in, in this example. So in, what is this, eight seconds, 10? Yeah, 10 seconds, we get a million rows. 
And if we look at what that data looks like, you can see it's just the number one with a first name and the one with a last name. So this is kind of nonsensical data. It doesn't, it's fake. It doesn't mean anything, but it's definitely useful if we want to go ahead and try out an application or repository to see how well it returns uh, information. If we need an index or, uh, you know, if our data access strategy is working appropriately. Sometimes the data you, you use needs to conform to certain standards. Maybe there are business rules uh, that are required for the data to be loaded from the repository and for you to be able to use it and to test it. Uh, perhaps you need a distribution of data to conform to more realistic standards. I actually have uh, tables that I use for generating test data that I've culled from other public data sources. So I have a table of seed first name and that includes a list of all the first names that I've encountered and a quantity so that I can apply a distribution uh, frequency that would match a real life scenario. Uh, so these can, can be kind of useful to generate and populate uh, a test table. All right, so let's look at a more uh, realistic example where our data needs to conform to some specification. Uh, we're still going to have a customer table, and I've also added a customer address table where we've got uh, line one, city, state, and a postal code. And in this case, I'm trying to insert 500,000 customers, and I'm trying to insert two addresses for each customer. So I could define some variables here to annotate that. And the challenge is, is that we're going to leverage our numbers table and join against our table of first names and our table of last names. Now, I've only got about 250,000 first names and about 250,000 last names. So that's a problem if I want to insert 500,000 because I can't just do an inner join where I join the primary key for the first name table with the uh, number that's in the numbers table because what will happen is I'll, I'll only get around 250,000 results. Uh, the numbers for over the 250,000 won't meet the inner join criteria. So how do I get by this? Well, I'm gonna have to leverage the modulus uh, operator. In fact, this is really hard to describe. So let's take a look at a spreadsheet. All right, so I think this might help uh, explain the situation. When the counter is equal to one and I do a modulus fives because maybe there's five rows in the table, I'm gonna get back a one, that's fine. But when we get here to five, I do five modulus five, there's no remainder, so the value is zero. I can't join against row zero because there is no row zero. What I really wanna do in this case is use a case statement. So instead of returning the actual modulus, I'll just return the number of rows that are in that table in this case, it would be five and everything is hunky dory. As soon as I get to six, I do six modulus five. Now it's a remainder of one. So I go back and I'm going to join on the first row in that first names table. So that's the behavior that I'm trying to implement with that case statement. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and select from the numbers table and I'm gonna to join to the seed first name table based off of that select, that case statement, so that I'm always going to get a valid foreign key value. Uh, and so once I get this, I'll go ahead and be able to insert the 500,000 rows. When I run it, you can see it runs in about two seconds. So pretty good. Now let's take a look at the addresses part. So for the addresses, we're gonna go back to that notion of set-based operations uh, over iterative operations. And the big thing where I wanna think about here is that instead of inserting uh, two rows 500,000 times, two addresses for 500,000 customers, we're going to actually want to insert 500,000 addresses twice because that's two set-based operations that'll perform much better. So what I've done is I've actually created a loop, an address loop, and I've said, I'm going to execute this twice and here on the inner, I'm sorry, on the where clause of my select statement, I'm going to specify the address loop times the number of customers. So the first time we go through this, we're going to select all of the numbers where the address loop is zero times the number of customers, 500,000, that'll be zero. So all the numbers greater than zero, and then all of the numbers less than 
500,000, right? The address loop will be zero plus one is one times the number of customers, 500,000. So we're gonna do this 500,000 times the first time, but then we increment our loop to two and then we run through again and we'll be doing the second 500,000. Obviously we have fewer addresses than we do customers. I don't have 500,000 addresses. So I'm going to utilize that same case statement logic with a modulus to make sure that I'm getting a valid address ID to store in the customer name table. All right, so let's go ahead and run this thing and see how long it takes. Uh, two, three, four, four seconds, and we're done. Uh, it's actually 500,000 in one row, but one of those is the count statement. So really pretty quick, five seconds, we have half a million customers with a million addresses. Explaining that script can feel a little bit cumbersome that first time through, but really it is a way to populate a parent and child uh, relationship in a database schema and so you can use that same pattern over and over. You don't need to recreate the logic, you just need to change the table names and the fields. And that's why it actually doesn't take that long to generate a bunch of test data for a set of SQL tables.